a 1,700 mile crack across the United States has been discovered by scientists and most people don't know that it's there. And here's what you need to know about this. 1,700 mile crack across America from Vancouver Island all the way across even passing, uh, intersecting through Yellowstone supervolcano and ending up at the uh, New Madrid seismic zone fault, which actually should be called New Madrid rift zone. That's another crack from Mississippi all the way down up from uh, into the Great Lakes, Lake Ontario and Erie and continuing up to the uh, St. Lawrence River. As we know, all rivers are fault lines. And a lot of people don't even know that the Great Lakes has a mantle plume underneath. So what is this 1,700 mile crack across America? Is America at risk of great earthquakes spanning across the full United States? Cracks across America in rift zones may conceal large fracture type faults where scientists may not be able to identify where these hidden fractures may unleash catastrophic earthquakes. Los Angeles, California, California Network. In November 1981, a study was published that rocked the scientific world and sparked concern in FEMA circles in which a 1,700 mile crack across America was discovered. And worse yet, this crack cut through the New Madrid seismic zone, where in 1811 and 1812, three great earthquakes devastatingly struck the center of America. Scientists have been struggling since then to answer the question of what risk this mega feature may pose to our heartland today. Recently and less known is a study from an independent geological research set of work that has identified a possible second crack through America that crosses into and through the same volatile New Madrid seismic zone. The original 1,700 mile crack across America was found using modern day gravity mapping satellite data and using computers to process the measurements. In 1981, Dr. Raymond E. Ardvidson of Washington University, St. Louis, used data processing techniques where 600,000 discrete gravity measurements from 20 years of scientific data gathering to synthesize a map. The result revealed an astonishing, astonishing ancient rift in the North American crust. It extends some 1,700 miles from Idaho to the Southern Appalachian Mountains. New discoveries from more recent research has extended this crack anomaly in where it combines with a mega shear zone to the middle of Washington State and possibly with the Olympic Wallowa alignment OWA owl, which reaches to the Pacific Ocean near Port Angeles, Washington. This is a total length, maybe, maybe totally, uh, total near 2,200 miles. This ancient rift, estimated to be a billion years old, just about the age of the mantle plume under the Great Lakes, it may be about a billion years old, was dubbed the Missouri Gravity Low in the easternmost section of the crack across America. Another rift 60 miles by 30 miles under the Mississippi River Valley, called the Real Foot Rift, was found to cross through the Missouri Gravity Low and head to the northeast-southwest, these two rift zones intersect at the New Madrid seismic zone. Over 4,000 small earthquakes have been mapped within these intersecting rift regions since 1974. A maverick geologist uh, Jack Reed performed the study in mapping the frequency location of larger magnitude earthquakes trending along the northeast trending alignment of real foot rift. The resulting data indicated another concerning revelation that a possible second crack through America connects the real foot rift with the well-known St. Lawrence River, the rift zone in Canada passing through Montreal, Quebec, just as the New Madrid seismic zone revealed its active potential in its rift zones. A magnitude 7.9 earthquake in 1663 struck near Charlevoix and revealed its power in the St. Lawrence rift zone. Perhaps a practical a partial clue to what may link the existence and natural and the nature of the crack across America 
and the crack through America is the Mid-Continental Rift, MCR. That's what we see, that horseshoe-shaped thing over the Great Lakes, Mid-Continental Rift, MCR. So, um, from tremendous intraplate pressure, forced a southern expansion on this Great Rift, where the southern edge traversed directly towards the New Madrid Seismic Zone. The Mid-Continental Rift thus forms a horseshoe that straddles and reaches by its tips at or near the two major cracks. One tip, the uh, western, the eastern tip, goes at uh, New Madrid Seismic Zone, and the western tip goes at the 1,700-mile uh, crack. That's magma there. And the Great Plains have been stretching because of that magma. And we know that uh, from the past geological uh, uh, video updates that I had posted, Wyoming and Yellowstone, for example, Wyoming was smack against uh, Lake Superior. So you can understand that in the past billion years how the continental United States has stretched out and grown. So this mid-continental rift thus forms a horseshoe straddling reaching by its tips at or near the two major crack alignments. Intraplate pressure could be intensifying into these intersecting alignments, including the resulting pressures at the New Madrid seismic zone. What can make these 70 to 90 mile wide, thousands of miles long, low gravity crack alignments feature so dangerous in their hidden fractures buried in the Earth's crust below? These low gravity areas are called rift zones where the continental crust tried to pull itself apart but failed. The thinning of the crust enabled lighter density rock to intrude, thus resulting in the lower gravity characteristics in the rift zones. Other recent studies suggest that the thinning of the crust may occur from the delamination of heavier crustal rock falling down into the Earth's mantle. However, in the case of linear features of these long-distance alignment rift zones, the case of random delimination from falling into the mantle would not be able to explain these highly organized structures. What is known is that these linear rift zones have exhibited the ability to unleash very large earthquakes. This has been aptly demonstrated by the three 1811 to 1812 New Madrid magnitude 7 to magnitude 8 earthquakes and the large 1663 magnitude 7.9 Chalvois earthquake. Since the, regular, the regularity of such earthquakes are measured in centuries, scientists are unable to identify if any section of these linear rift zones may be at risk of a sudden large earthquake. The bigger the length and depth of buried fracture and its subsequent pressure-induced release, the greater the chances for this rupture to unleash a giant earthquake. Indeed, the three 1811-1812 magnitude 7 to 8, 8 magnitude 8 earthquakes had ruptured release areas comparable to any single biggest locked segment of the San Andreas, California fault region could do, except in the New Madrid quakes, it did, not, it, did it all the, the, in the same location, with each huge quake spaced only a month apart. With thousands of miles of possible buried fractures within these land alignments, it's possible that changes in interplate pressure may be all that is necessary to activate a segment. Another unanswered question is if Yellowstone supervolcano is susceptible or interactive with this alignment. Indeed, in 2002, geologists observed distant triggering of earthquake swarming at Yellowstone from the magnitude 7.9 Denali, Alaska earthquake. As the Denali earthquake was 2,000 miles away, what would happen if a large earthquake within a rift zone alignment was much closer to Yellowstone? Certainly, it would be useful to know if there were any susceptible buried fractures in the nearby alignment that traversed near Yellowstone supervolcano. However, scientists are placing are placed at a disadvantage in earthquake risk assessment since any hidden fractures are buried deep in what is called the mid-continental basement without having any, any data to the size, length, and number of any hidden fractures, it renders any risk analysis blind. Only a, paleo, a paleogeologist assessment of past locations 
patterns, frequency, and magnitude of earthquakes are assigned to stable to form a type of risk assessment. Compounding any risk assessment is understanding the rupture process of these hidden fractures. Scientists refer to these as interplate earthquakes, as the quake occurs within the interior of a tectonic plate. Pressure within the buried fracture, the hence the fault, may instigate an earthquake. GPS, strain centers, and even in INSAR, interferometric synthetic aperture radar, are of no use to preferring answers to these questions, as these fractures are inaccessible since they are deep below, while the sediment or crust above hides any telltale sign of crustal creep or stress. Because of risk assessment uncertainty, FEMA and other agencies are left to estimating the risk of America's infrastructure based on a worst-case paleogeologic history, hence the maximum at any moment. Indeed, the 1999 FEMA list was one of the major top four hazards in the United States, as catastrophic would be a giant earthquake striking the central U.S. Because scientists are unable, unable to predict the timing nor the location of the next large earthquake in these rift zones, there is a difference of viewpoints regarding cost trade-offs of implementation and or updates of rigorous seismic building codes between the scientific community and the emergency management organizations. Complicating the situation is that earthquakes that occur in the central or eastern United States affect much larger areas and similar magnitudes in the western United States. That you can feel them. You can feel a four magnitude earthquake much ten times more than you could feel on the West Coast, for example. So the FEMA guide refers to that 1906 magnitude 7.8 San Francisco, California earthquake was felt by was felt 350 miles away in the middle of Nevada. In contrast, the 1811 New Madrid earthquake was reported to have rung church bells in Boston, Massachusetts, which was a thousand miles away. Differences in the geologic makeup of the Earth's crust east and west of the Rockies are noted to be the cause of this stronger conduction of the earthquakes, P waves and S waves, creating the distant shaking contrast. As the rate of earthquakes have been increasing in the New Madrid seismic zone and in other parts of central United States, such as Oklahoma, there are concerns that interplate tectonic pressures may be driving these trends. Other areas such as the Wabash Valley and East Tennessee seismic zones also produce earthquakes on a regular basis. Quoting from the CUSEC, depending on earthquake magnitude and location, each of these zones could impact multiple states, causing major physical, social, and economic disruption in a region that is home to more than 40 million people. On April 8th, This is from Catholic.org on Bended Reality. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.